All right, it's Billy Ray and Don at Motor City Comic Con with Ms. Jane McNeil. It's so nice to meet you. I love it that you can meet a Walking Dead cast member. Thank you. It's nice <laughs> to meet you guys. Are you having a good show? Is this the first time you've been in Detroit? It is not the first time I've been in Detroit, but it is my first Comic Con or, you know, convention. So, okay, so you're new to this newness. whole crazy thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I'd kind of um, done an appearance or something before, but I'd never really done one of these, so it's been kind of exciting and okay. different. Okay, well, let's talk about your character of Patricia, Walking Dead. How did that all come about? And first of all, can I ask you, was it your first TV role? Yes, it was. Okay, and how did that come about for you? Well, I had started acting again in 2009, and I had an agent, and, uh, you know, I was I had worked with a casting director to... Uh, trained to be on camera because I'd really never done that. I quit acting and for 15 years. So uh, anyway, several auditions had come and gone, but this one came up, and I just felt like I knew that character really well, even though I knew nothing about the show, and I mean literally nothing. So you hadn't watched it at all? No. Okay. And uh, I, I didn't even really know it was about a zombie apocalypse, to be honest with you. Um, I just felt like I knew Patricia. It was a scene where I was... Um, stitching up tea dog and I worked with a bunch of nurses at my day job so I kind of saw her as this one nurse in particular that was a friend of mine so that was sort of a jumping off point and uh, and then I didn't hear about anything for three weeks so it was just another one of those that came and went and uh, I was on a trip with my family and I landed in New York and my agent called and said you have it you have to be there Tuesday so I, wow. one post to the well, actually it's in Georgia. I was thinking it was in LA, but well, so I was in New York. And I live in North Carolina, so I was in New York, and then the flight was canceled. They lost my bags. I had to rent a car, drive to Atlanta with nothing, um, and I was completely wigged out. And the first day on set, I'm at the farmhouse, you know, to meet everybody, and they just kind of plop me down, and I'm looking around like, oh my god. And Andrew Lincoln comes over and kisses me and hugs me and oh, says nice. welcome, and I'm like, ah, I think this will be okay, you know. Now, how much were you told about the character of Patricia ahead of time? Like, what was the sketch that they gave you? What were her characters? Well, you usually get it for a breakdown. Like, the breakdown will tell you uh, a, a little bit about the show. You know, this is set in Georgia and blah, blah, blah. Um, it, it, I don't know that it said anything other than the fact that it was Otis's wife. And she was a nurse assistant to Herschel mm -hmm. on the farm you know, after the grid's gone out, you know, after the, you know, the apocalypse has happened, these people are stranded there, and that was, that was it, that was all I knew. Wow. And you did 11 episodes. Yes. Um, and was that any change from what they told you originally? Like, did they kind of give you an idea of how long you would be on the show, or do you, like, go in not knowing how long your character's going to live? Well, in, in my case, um, uh, it was three episodes, and so, uh, once you get there, I, at the end of the third episode, I was moping around like, I guess this is me. And then I sort of knew I probably wasn't going to make it to season three, but I got the call to tell me officially in the episode before that from Glenn Mazzaro. He called me about nine o'clock in the morning, and I was like, I think I know what this is about. Ouch. So that was a really tough day. And yeah. I was really, I was really, really happy to have the experience of, you know, my first TV role and ha and really having a smaller part because I stayed on set all the time watching people like Scott work who's just a legend He's wonderful. and people He's like Andrew and watching their technique and watching not really no <laughs> I, just wanted to stay, I wanted to stay alive well, I'm saying once you knew you were gonna die were you hoping to maybe be a zombie for an episode just, just wear the cool makeup. Maybe it's not cool. I don't know. Well, uh, that last episode, it was 30 degrees out, or maybe 20. Oh. So those be those zombies were freezing. And uh, yeah, I guess I never really thought about that. Um, it it would have been cool. I guess it would have been cool. I, I didn't really even think about it at the time, you know. Um, I mean, I guess I could come back as a zombie, but no, I really couldn't because they ate me, so I don't think there's enough left. You might see a mop of hair, you know, or something. Oh, yeah. It would be kind of funny. So what was it like the first time you seen the zombies and working on this, that set with the post-apocalyptic genre? Well, I didn't see zombies until the episode where I was feeding them. 
you know, in the but barn. Being kept in the barn, so controversial. And truthfully, Herschel felt like they could be cured. Right. And truthfully, I, they weren't there really when I was throwing the chickens. Mm -hmm. So now, how late do you usually film at night? Well, you have night you have night shoots sometimes. Um, so if it's if the scene is supposed to be at night, then you're going to work. You go in at five o'clock, six o'clock in the evening, and work until anywhere two, three, ten in the morning. I just did a movie in New Orleans, and we were having to shoot scenes in a casino, so we had to wait till the casino closed. My call time. My call time was 10 p.m. and then. I get out till 10 a.m. the next morning. Which so, you prefer, movies or series TV? Well, uh, what I would most prefer is to have another recurring role on a TV series, and, and, I, and I really enjoy the folks at Rectify. Um, it's actually 20 minutes from Sonoya where they shoot that, and it's really compelling subject matter also. It's about a guy who um, is released from prison after raping and murdering his girlfriend and he's not exonerated but he comes back out with you know and it's like oh because of DNA evidence and he doesn't really believe he's innocent and it's a really small town like where I'm from in North Carolina so um, it, it has a it just has a lot of moral issues and dilemmas like The Walking Dead I mean that's what's so cool about The Walking Dead really the zombies are really cool let's face it it's action it's all that but what we're really watching is the relationships and the moral dilemmas and how we negotiate being human in an inhuman world. Yes, exactly. And what is the definition of humanity when you're faced with this inhumanity and right. this, you know, that's threatening your life on a daily basis. I think Herschel's episode 405, I think it was, where he talks about you take a drink of water, you risk your life. I mean, that's... That episode really kind of sums up the show in a lot of ways. Yeah. It really was so powerful. He said he told me that a little girl came over, was like 10 years old, and 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 like did the entire soliloquy for him the other day. That oh, entire that's so speech. Fun. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah. He was really blown away by that. He's made a major impact with that. Yeah. That is so cool. Okay. Well, we won't keep you any longer. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, guys. Thanks fun. for taking the time. Nice talking to you.